On this video, I'm going to teach you guys some basics on how to read lake topographic maps. If you got here from our ice fishing basics video, uh, do me a favor. Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't seen that yet, just follow this card up top and you can go check that out. Guys, before we get started, do me a favor. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you feel so inclined, hit that subscribe button. Every new subscriber helps us grow the channel and it helps us get more content out to more people. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the way I want to do this is just to pull up some lake topographic maps, kind of explain to you guys um, what the things mean on these maps, and then go over some of the structure that we look for when we're looking for fish. So to get started, I'm going to try to find a picture that has, this one will do great. Okay, so what we're seeing here is uh, at first a bunch of numbers and a bunch of lines. Uh, just to explain kind of what these mean, the lines are elevation change, okay? So when you see an area like this where there's a lot of space between the line or this here where there's a lot of space, what that means is that it's a flat part uh, of the bottom of the lake. Another little version right over here, this is a nice flat part. This is the shoreline. You can see that kind of coming through here. And how you read a topographic map, the closer the lines are together, the steeper the elevation change. The farther they are apart, the more gradual they are. The more you look at these things, uh, the more you have an idea um, and you can picture these things in your head. So what we're looking at at this picture is we've got a finger that kind of comes out. We've got an area of right here down the middle where you see it goes from 2 to 20. A very sharp line right here. See, these are so close together. That means it's a steep drop off. And then as we come into here, we start to notice it spread out a little bit more with some flats. Okay, so this is what we would call a point. Um, when you look over here, you notice that right here, the lines are a lot more steep. And over here, they're a lot more gradual. So what we're seeing here is a pretty steep drop off, a sharp drop off, and this is a more gradual, almost like a hump. Um, going on into some of the other pictures, just to kind of show you again what we're looking at. These are a bunch of different bays. This is on Lake Sakakawea. Um, and what you see is the creek channels as they come in, all of these little inlets. And then you can see where the coolies that they used to be that uh, flooded because Lake Sakakawea used to be a river. It's a dammed up lake and so it backed the water up into the coolies. You can see now all of these areas where it goes from deep to these sharp lines, up shallow, up shallow. So you get big deep holes and you get a lot of these, um, these steep drop offs. Okay, so this is a really zoomed out portion. You notice all of this area here, there's really no lines. All of this area here, there's really no lines. Again, towards the shore, you start to see a bunch of lines and they're close together. And then what we're looking at right here is we're looking at kind of a reef or an island that's submerged. And I'll go into a little more zoomed in. Okay, so you see again here, we're out in 65, 70 feet, really deep. And then you get to right here and notice that thicker black line. That thicker black line is just, for the most part, a sheer cliff face that comes up into a bunch of structure right on top here, anywhere between 18 and 25, 24, oh, what are we looking at, 30 feet-ish. And then it kind of slowly tapers off of this backside. And so what you can see on this picture, imagine it's going to be almost vertical and then kind of slowly gets back deep again over here. So you've got a wall, and then you've got gradual, uh, gradual deepening over here, and you've got some deep water shelves that are kind of sitting over here and over here. Okay, this is another, uh, another view out of some other sunken islands. So this is kind of crazy when you look at it, because the more color you get, the more structure you get in the lake. So we're in, obviously, this is the Van Hook Arm of Lake Sagakuya. This is a submerged island. This is a submerged island, and so is this. And then when you look over here, this is all sorts of flooded structure. Um, and we're going to zoom in on both of these here in a second. Okay, so again, you can see just how steep 
these humps are, these underwater sunken islands. Um, this goes all the way up into six feet. And really right here, it looks like it might even be out of the water. Same thing is happening kind of over here. We get sharp, sharp drop off, sharp break off of the deep water structure, a little bit less sharp coming off of the side. Um, and then when you look over here to the side, you can see all of these little, uh, little fingers that kind of jaunt out and a lot of little swirls and just depressions in the water. Um, so I know it's kind of tough to see, but if you look over here, notice there's a flat and then it's a little less aggressive with the sharp things coming off of each side. What this is, is a big hump that goes down to a bowl and then another big hump. So that's going to work as a trench that goes up. Um, and so what a lot of these fish like to do, I'm going to see if I can find, yeah, here's a little bit better view of that. Do I have one more that goes in? Yeah. Okay. So here is a, a zoom in of a little place called Littlefield Bay. When you look at this, you see all of these little swirlies that are going every which direction. And honestly, it's a little bit intimidating. Um, but there's a few things that you need to know that can really help you break this down. First, um, this map that we're looking at is Humminbird Chart Select. How it's set up is the deeper the water, the darker the blue, the, the shallower the water, the lighter the color. So you can see out here in this 65 foot hole, a darker blue. As you move up, it gets a little bit lighter. And now we see in here where it stays darker blue, but then you see some lighter areas up here and up here. And again, when you're looking at those lines, you see those close together, sharper lines, close together, sharper lines. What we've got going on here is we've got these deep water trenches that come up through some steeper side hills and then some little flats that are kind of coming out on top of that. So think about it like um, almost like you're driving through a coulee. You know, you're driving through the inside. There's big steep walls on both sides, but you're down on that little depression. And that's the easiest way to travel. And that's a lot of times where the fish are going to travel through as well. I'm going to zoom in one more step here. Okay. Um, so here we see again, deeper water with the darker, and then we start coming into an area like this. So you notice how this almost looks like an X and then there's sharp on here, sharp on here, sharp here, 37 feet, sharp here, 39 feet. What you've got here is deep water, deep water, a small hill with two big valleys still on the side. And then it goes back down into another deep hole. So you've got almost like, a, again, walls on the side, it comes up, it does a little hump, and then it goes back down into the deep side with still these big walls on the side. And so what you're going to see a lot of the time is you're going to see these fish get it funneled along the deep or funneled along the sharp breaks. Um, I want to talk to you really quick about something. Oh, sorry about that. I want to talk to you really quick about places that you'd like to look for fish. Okay, so fish tend to not so much like to go up the straight vertical cliffs. Um, and so one place that we like to fish is something called an inside turn. So just kind of a, an idea, we'll say, of an inside turn. Um, check this out right here. You see how these lines are all pretty darn close together? And then what happens is we go up here and it just gets more spread out and then they're close together here. What this is, is this is a, a underwater finger. It's a point that goes straight out. We've got a sharp break that comes around a corner. Then you have a finger that sets out, but then it's a more gradual spread out that goes over top of that finger. So what you'll see is you'll see the fish come along here and then you'll see them concentrate coming up onto this finger right here on this little funnel, right where those lines start to come across or come open. That's what we call an inside turn. Um, another good version of it is going to be say right here. Say we come here and all of a sudden it's, it's steep, steep, steep and it opens up into some shallow a little bit here. It's on the other side. Um, let's see if I can find one more example of that for us. Um, okay, here's another example of this for us. Okay, so um, imagine we've got fish that are coming through this funnel. So see how it's lighter, 18 feet, lighter here. You know, we're going 14-ish feet up to here, but we got 36, 37. Then what you've got 
is you've got this sharp break line that comes up through here. Well, it's going sharp, 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 and then it starts to open up. You see how these lines start to open up? And it's almost another little funnel that goes from 28 up to 19. What you've got is you've got like a first inside turn right here, the first funnel where the fish are gonna come out of the deep water on both sides and then come right up here into this little shallower. And another thing you have is another option for them to go even shallower on this, this picture here because they can come right up through this little turn. Um, see how it's nice and, and f uh, sharp there? We got a steep drop off, a steep drop off, and it comes right here, a nice little funnel up. So a great place to set up if you were ice fishing would be um, somewhere right off of this little funnel here, um, maybe off of this point where they come around the corner and open up, and then maybe you can put some up here for later in the day. Another piece of structure that we like to look for is a basin. And you'll see basin fishing happening a lot more when you have more pan fish. Um, the basin in this situation would be out here in this 45 plus feet where that's just a big featureless bowl. Um, you can have these little mini versions of basins here too where you've got this 37 foot hole. Um, this kind of gives you the best of both worlds because you get this deep basin hole and also some structure off to the side. Um, right here, this is a hump. So notice how it's just sharp, 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 and then there's a circle. That's probably an old hill um, in the actual coulee itself, or that could be a sand hill. Uh, all we know is that it's a nice piece of structure down there, and there's a bunch of them in this picture. Here's another one. Here's another big hill. This is a great looking spot with a lot of structure that would hold a lot of walleyes. So the point of this video isn't necessarily to show you um, the tips and tricks and how to have strategy in using the lake maps. What I want to do was teach you how to read them. And the big take homes are understanding what the colors mean on the graphs. Like I said before in this one, darker colors equal deeper water, lighter colors equal uh, shallower water, and then knowing what the lines mean. Again, the farther the lines are apart, the more gradual the transition. The closer they are, the steeper. And once you start to see this, and once you look at this enough, you can start to put an idea in your head of what the bottom of that lake looks like. And you can put together then, based on what kind of fish you're fishing for and what time of the year it is, a plan to go in there and catch those fish. Guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up here really quick. Um, this was just a very basic overview. In the future, I'm going to do a much more in-depth version with some real life situation. I'll actually take some pictures while we're out in the boat fishing. Make this a lot easier. I just wanted to give you a overview of how to read the maps. If you liked the video, just like I said before, please hit me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Uh, until next time, Keep living your North Prairie life.